Good morning, good morning, radio audience. We are back again. I am Apostle Deborah Harris, and I'm filling in for my good friend, Pastor Jimmy Ellison. And we are here today to share uh, further with you concerning our relationship with God and why it is so very important to have a relationship with God in this hour. I have uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Minister Angel Angela Lucky, that we will be. Sh I mean, that's here with me, and we're going to be sharing today about uh, the importance of having a relationship with God in this hour. Uh, we have uh, carried on for for such a season, and we have either built our relationship, strengthen our relationship in Christ, or we haven't. It's one or the other. So today we really want to look at why is it so important to have a relationship and not only have one, but to strengthen that relationship because we are going to see many, many things in the future and we're going to have to have a relationship with Christ and our faith is going to have to be strengthened it's going to have to be strong in order to stand in the days of adversity that we will see forthcoming so uh, Minister Lucky here that's here with me today she is a teacher and uh, counselor and many many other things uh, she has lots of hats and I'm going to let her introduce herself to you, and then we're going to get started with increasing and, and improving our relationship with Christ. Good morning. My name is Angela Lucky. I am a minister. My home church is uh, Living Faith Tabernacle in Palmetto, where my pastors are uh, Vincent and Zenobia Broomfield. And I just want to say I'm happy to be here today. I was honored to be asked to be here, and I'm excited about what we're going to talk about. Because I know with me, I couldn't do it without God. Amen. That's so true. That's so true. And neither can I. And we have to that we have to be those that will acknowledge that that we cannot do anything without Christ who strengthens us. Second Corinthians five seventeen and eighteen simply reads um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And, and it goes on, uh, that verse, verse uh, continues, but I just want to highlight the fact that if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. Old things have been passed away, and behold, old things have become new. That is the life of a Christian, a believer in Christ Jesus. When we truly do believe in Christ, our lives are now being changed. Amen. Our lives are being changed, and they are being changed for the better. And we are putting behind us our old ways. And those old ways are, are, are just really... Uh, Minister Lucky, uh, those old ways are the ways of the flesh that we had a tendency to lean to Absolutely. so often uh, in the past uh, and in our past days. And now that Christ has come and taken his abode of in us, we're now looking to a better and a new life. And only Christ can do that. And so, Minister Lucky, when we look at the situations that we're in today, this is why it's so important that we have a relationship with Christ, and this is why it's so important that we improve that relationship with Christ. We, and, and we've had an opportunity, right, during this pandemic season, we've had an opportunity to really grow closer to Christ. And that's only if we did not spend our, all of our awakening moments watching television or on Facebook or on some media, uh, some social media outlet. If we had time, if we, if we took the time to pray and pray and read and study and seek God's face, then that within itself should improve our relationship, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, I'm looking at you know, if we if we already are prayed up, you know, as Christians, mm -hmm. you know, we know this thing, this pandemic caused by, by surprise. 
But as right. a Christian, we should be prayed up enough that what whatever comes our way, it doesn't matter. Right. We should already be uh, prayed up about it. You know, it, it says me when I read um, certain people, certain people, nurses, doctors have committed suicide. Right. That's letting me know that they were not prayed up. They were not ready for this this ep epidemic. That's right. That is so true. That is so true. They were not ready. Um, and. And, and chances are more than likely, and we're, we're not, we don't know, we're not calling anybody by names. We don't even know any of these people. But we know what's presented to us, and we know what the scriptures are teaching us. And that is, if someone cannot handle the pressures and the adversities of this life in which we're living, Chances are they have not developed a relationship. They have not entered into a relationship. And they're not improving that relationship with Christ. Because one thing we know for sure, the Holy Spirit, he is our keeper. He will keep us during times like this if we allow him to. He will keep us during times like this. And we will not fall short. We will not fall faint we will be able to continue this race in Christ uh, simply trusting and leaning to God that's that's what what needs to happen and I truly believe that you know what what the Satan means for our bad God is gonna turn that thing around for our good we're looking at this as a pandemic but it's really it's still God working because God is always in control mm -hmm. and we just have to lean and depend on him God said he has not given us spirit of fear but a love power and a sound mind Wait right. my sound mind this time. He's given us time to reflect within ourselves. It's, it's some inner healing that needs to be done. Yes. This is the time that, to do it. Um, I've been at home these past months. I've been searching with God. God's been talking to me. And it's just been me and my dog, me and Romeo, have been at home. And, and it's just a beautiful thing. You can wake up. You can see the beauty of, of God. You can talk to God any time of the day without being interrupted with, you know, my job teaching, without being interrupted. And just seeing what he has for my life. And I think that's what he's trying to do with a lot of people. He wants people to slow down, stop what you're doing, and focus on me. That is so true. And I just knew you were going to mention Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Romeo was going to be in this conversation. And you are so right. He is trying to get our attention. No, we're not saying that he brought this about. Absolutely not. But he does allow everything to work together for our good. And, and the working together for our good simply suggests that this is a time to stop uh, wrestling and running and and doing all of the busy stuff that we do that at the end of the day is not going to amount to a whole lot uh, except you've done it for Christ he wants us to stop and he wants us to listen to him be still and know that I am God he wants us to listen to him and to see what is he trying to say like you said he's trying to talk to us he's trying to further us into purpose and, and give us assignments to fulfill in this hour because we are truly in the latter days so I truly do agree with you and it is as uh, Romans 12 1 and 2 says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as uh, your body is a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to God which is a, your reasonable service and then it goes on to say and do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so Minister Lucky I imagine that you based on what you just said you've been able to uh, have your mind renewed like never before because you've had all of this alone time this quiet time and this one on one time with God and you have had an opportunity to re to renew your mind uh, that you can now prove that uh, what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God and you know except we renew have our minds renewed or first of all have the mind of Christ we will never be able to prove what what is acceptable and pleasing to him so that's where I think we've all been in this season. And then, uh, unfortunately, we, you know, we, we, we were not, we're not even out of that season. And now we have approached a whole nother uh, um, uh, sense of activity or whatever we can call it. We've approached a whole nother ball game. 
of things happening, things that are not good, things that are not bad. And I do believe that one thing I can say for 2020, 2020 is definitely going to be a year of revealing. God is going to reveal a lot of things to us. A lot of things are going to come from uh, being hidden and covered up. It's time for the saints to understand that we should be praying like never before because now God is revealing. But as men and women of God, we have got to so be in that place where we are seeking God. We are presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. You know, let's, let's not sleep all day. Let's not watch television all day. Let's not uh, try to go walking all day or being, be out and about all day. But present your body as a living sacrifice. Look, you have to take, you have to get up and you have to make an assertive effort to, to do, do the things purpose. of God. You have to do it on purpose. Yes. I know you hit me when you said don't let's not watch TV and, and eat all day. That's my problem. Eating all day back and forth to the refrigerator. And I'm like, God, I know this is a, a, a reason for, for this season right now. So help me. So that's why I've been praying before him, seeking him. I want to know what my purpose is. Um, it is part of my life. You know, I've been a youth pastor. I've been in certain things. But now, you know, as I'm growing older, what is it, God, that you want me to do now? That's what I'm, I'm searching for. And I'm, I'm, and I'm in a place where I can hear his voice because it's just me. Right, right. And, and when, you, when you're having that alone time with God, you are able to seek him. You're able to say, okay, God, what is it that you would have me to do? And I think really and truly that's, that's where every born again man, woman, boy, and girl should be doing. Because if we began to walk in our purposes in this life, we're going to cover a lot of territory. We're going to cover a lot of bases. We're going to do just what God needs for us to do. And we're going to reach other people because that's what our purpose is all about. Our purpose is not about us, but it's about reaching other people. So this is absolutely the best time to be seeking God. The best time to be asking him, God, show me my purpose. Help me to walk in and fulfill my purpose in this life. And we can only do that through a solid relationship in Christ if we can only do it and you know uh, Minister Lucky I will say this that um, you're not the only one that allow the TV to distract you or to really get into it I think that's a problem for a lot of us it's a problem for a lot of us but <clears throat> we have to be prayerful and we have to say okay I am going to to do better we have to become disciplined mm -hmm. because it's important to have a relationship first of all and then secondly to improve on that relationship with Christ because the Apostle Paul tells us that we have to work out our salvation mm -hmm. with fear and trembling Amen. and especially in this hour, in this hour. because the enemy is sending out so many messages and we need to know which message to believe. That's right. You know, just like that song say, if I die and my soul be lost, nobody fought with mine. Yes. You got to work out your, like she said, you got to work out your own soul salvation. I can't go to heaven for uh, Apostle Harris. She can't go to heaven for me. Mm -mm. I got to go for myself. So it's just communicating with God. Just like I'm talking on the radio. That's how you communicate with God. And it is so easy. And he's always listening. He wants, he wants us to uh, have a uh, relationship with him and to talk to him. Yes, he does. He does. He really does. Uh, he longs for that fellowship, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add this, uh, Minister Lucky, too, along these lines that you know the pandemic. Um, and I I have to be honest. I'm gonna say it on radio too. <laughs> I call I'm calling calling it a scamdemic. Mm -hmm. Is it is beyond a pandemic? This is a scamdemic. Has been a scamdemic from the beginning. I'm sorry, radio audience, if you don't believe that, but that's exactly what I'm beginning to see. But even in this, talking about uh, you know our relationship with Christ, God has so created us to be relational people. He created us to be uh, people that want and need fellowship. Amen. So when this scandemic started, uh, that 
pulled us away and still yet trying to pull us away from fellowship and relationship. Not so much relationship with him, but relationship and fellowship with other people. That's who he created. And he even created us to, to have fellowship with him. He longs to have fellowship with us. and But he also took it beyond him. And he says, you need to be able to fellowship with your brothers and your sisters. But the scandemic wanted to take that away from us. And really doesn't want us to have that relationship and that fellowship one with the other. But you know, God has a way of doing everything. And that's why I trust him so dearly. He has a way of doing everything. He has a way of bringing us back to where, what he created us uh, to be. And who he created us to be. What he created us to do and who he created us to be. He has a way of doing that. And so that's why I trust him, Minister Lucky. Because he knows how to bring us back. And I wonder what is, what is it going to look like? What's going to be the new norm when we do go back to a new norm? Because we will never be the same again. And I truly really believe that. But I just wonder how people are going to Are they going to love better? Are they going to treat their neighbors better? You know, have we gained anything from this scandemic? <laughs> yes, it's the, the scandemic and all of the rioting and the protesting and, and, and lives that are being lost. Uh, are, we, are we learning anything? And this, in, in everything that happens, we should be saying, God, okay, God, show me what it is that I need to get from this. Amen. That's what we should be doing as it relates to our relationship with Christ. Because he will definitely, most definitely show us what we need to learn from this. And the scripture, uh, as the Apostle Paul wrote to the Church of Rome, and he says, and all things work together. For the good of those that love you and that are the call to according to his purpose. So when we are purposeful people, which if we've been called into the body of Christ and, and God says that I wish that all men would be saved. We are purposeful people. And because we are purposeful people, then all things will work together for our good. Because we are the called. We are called by God to be purposeful people in this land, in this Amen. earth, to fulfill purpose, to reach our destiny. And so things work, they work out. Things don't work against us, they work out for us, Absolutely. right? So, and, and when things are working out for us, we just cannot help but to be on the winning side. Amen. And that's, that's been my mindset from day one with this scandemic and everything else that's going on. I'm still winning. As Amen. my good friend would say, yes. we're winning. I'm still winning. Yes, and right. when we don't lose with the stuff that we use, right, and man. that's God's stuff. Amen. 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 We don't lose. And so that's just where we have to be. We have to have that mindset. And it is my prayer that we all can get that mindset. We just have to get the mind of Christ. And I'm telling you, Amen. Minister Lucky, to have the mind of Christ is a powerful thing. Yes, it is. You don't have to worry like you used to. I mean, you don't. You, you just rest in God. That's I mean, it. That's, I mean, that's when it. You can rest in God, and all this chaos is going on around you. Mm. I don't even look at the news all the time. I don't. I don't look at the news all the time. I don't um, uh, listen to gossip all the time, where people are te constantly telling me stuff because I'm just resting. They, and they'll ask me, I'm so why you ain't upset? Why are you doing this? Because I'm resting. I'm resting in God. Powerful word. I'm that's a powerful word. I don't have to get all. Excited. I'm already ADHD, so I don't have to get all excited about this little stuff that's going on. And I also look at it as a time of renewing. God is bringing up his families and stuff back together. You know, yes, he is. Parents and, and kids are getting to know one another. Where, where as this world, this world is so fast and so ongoing. They they working. They ball games, this and that. God slowed this world down so that you can get to know your family, get to know who you are, and get to know. I mean. Understand what you what, what you're missing. Yes, yes. The little things we take for granted. Toilet paper. I mean, I never, I never would have thought that we would ever be racing or fighting over toilet paper. So, I know that's right. Let's definitely say fight. Right. <laughs> we took those stuff like that for granted. So after this pandemic, oh are we gonna be more cautious of, of things? Are we? Are we? I wonder. And, and are we gonna? Are we gonna love, uh, like Christ loved? Amen. 
Are we going to love like Christ loved? And you know, we can just about answer that because we're not even out of the scandemic season. And we're already hating, mm -hmm. bickering, uh, arguing, violence, murder, you name it. We're already doing this. Mm -hmm. And when I say we are, I'm talking about people in general. Mm -hmm. And listen, I, yes, I'm talking about the people that, are, that, that we are now learning that are responsible for all of the looting and the violent protesting. We're talking about those people because listen, if we are truly in Christ, we have to have the love of God for all of mankind, even the chief of sinners. Amen. Amen. We have to have the love. Right. And, and it's not about racism so much. It's about right and wrong. Yes. Is it right to kill somebody? Um, right, right. Is it, is it right to kill and take somebody's life? But on the flip side, is it right to loot? To go in and tear and uh, go into these businesses and burn them. No, I mean, it's it's not right. And and, you're, and I'm glad you make mention of that. It is a matter of right and wrong, and it really has nothing to do with the color of our skin. Amen. And you and I can you and I can 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 honestly say this because we've been there. Mm -hmm. You taught middle school. Mm -hmm. I taught middle school. You never taught. Have you ever taught elementary? Mm -hmm. I was counseling in elementary. You counsel in elementary, so you know. Mm -hmm. I was in elementary. I then moved to middle school. You were a counselor. You uh, taught middle school, and now you're high school, right? Amen. So we understand that when you're dealing with these young people, you cannot look at these young people and look at the color of their skin mm -hmm. and say, I'm going to choose this person over this person, or I'm going to love that person over that person. Mm -hmm. There's no way you can do that. Now, let me just, let me just clear something up. I say we shouldn't, but perhaps there have been some instances where it has happened, but I don't, I, I cannot understand how anyone could do that. Because children are so innocent. Yes, they're, they're still children, even though they think they're grown than you and I doubled, <laughs> right? They, they, yes, yes, they are still children. They don't understand that, but we do. You can, and, and I, I, I actually had a young man um, back, in, back in my middle school days, and he accused me of being a racist. And, and, and of course, I knew I wasn't. Because I loved all of my children, even those that were disrespectful, those that were disobedient. Yes, they we, we loved them. And I loved them. And that thing cut me to the heart. And I went to the principal and I told him, I said, uh, no, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We are going to sit down with this young man and we are going to get to the bottom of this because I refuse to be called a racist. Because I understand where that spirit comes from. Right. And we got to the bottom of it. And we brought that young man in and I told him and I made him understand. I said, listen, because you're disobedient and you're disrespectful and I correct you, that does not make me a racist. That makes me in charge. <laughs> not a racist. Amen. Let's get this straightened out today. It also shows that you care for him. Because if you yes. didn't, you don't care what he did. And I wouldn't correct him. Okay. Right. So, but, but my point is we, we cannot allow uh, the color of our skin to divide us because God loves us. We're in a relationship with an all loving God. Amen. How can you, because my relationship is, is being fulfilled in Christ, how can I separate it outside of Christ? I mean, it, is, it cannot happen. Cannot. We have to be those that are willing to look at the scene for what it's worth and say, look, it is what it is. And, and I'll, I'm going to say this, and you jump right in, in in just a second. It is, as I've given this demonstration, you know, with uh, George Floyd and everything that's, he's a black man, I'm a black woman, everything that's going on over here. And, you know, the Black Lives Matter and all that stuff. Then you got, you have the uh, white cop that killed him and the other cops that were with him. They're over here. So, for me being a Christian, and because my relationship is sincere and it's real, I'm going to be dead smack in the middle, middle with Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's safe. It's safe. You see what I'm saying? It's safe. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be over here, 
and I'm not going to be over here. It's dangerous here and it's dangerous right here. But if I stay right here in the middle with Jesus, I'm saved. I love being saved. You know what I'm saying? I love being saved. I'm going to stay right here in the middle. Jesus is my, is my safety net. And can I speak truth here? Powerfully. Whether people want to receive it or not. But one thing, I, one thing I will say, I can go to bed at night and go to sleep. And I love my sleep. Yes, Amen. Amen. I can go to sleep at night if I stay right here with Jesus. Amen. So so where, with that little illustration, you get what I'm saying, right? I do. And, and what, what, what do you, you know, as much as, as, much as we as black people, we want to be on this side. But you've already said it. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. It don't matter who do it. Or who. Right. Now we we mourn for the death of this gentleman, who, from my understanding, uh, was uh, very active in church, very active in his community. We mourn for his death, his wrongful wrongful death. We mourn for him. Mm-hmm. Our heart goes out to him. But even his even his family has come out and said, "Look, stop it." This does not represent who he was, and I thank God for his family coming out and making that plea. Because they're trying to celebrate his life. If he's, if yes. he's saved, and, and, and as they say they were, he was, they should be resting or be glad that we didn't know he's resting with God. Um, you know, I, I have a question to, and I, and I may get in trouble for this, but I see on Facebook all the time um, where black mamas are posting pictures of, I have a black son. I have a black son. Well, and there's nothing wrong with that because I have a black nephew. You know, I have black, I have black students. Uh, yes. Uh, male students. But what are we teaching these kids? To say because that. Because the ones that are yeah. out in the streets protesting and looting, they're somebody's child too. Yes. Are we training them up in the fear of the Lord? Are we? Are we taking them to church? Thank you, sister. Are we, are we going to church? With Thank them? you. Thank and, you. And those that know me know there's times I've had a car load. Black, white kids, it didn't matter, and I took them to church. That's I used right. to do all that stuff. I can attest to that. I used to do all that stuff, and I didn't care. I, I used to go to church with them. They, they loved it. it. It was no code. Nothing. It was just love. When you love somebody, it has no code. Thank it's just, you. It's just love. Thank you. Thank and, you. You know, and we, we realized, when we realized that God is, uh, Jesus already died on the cross for all the stuff that we're doing, why are we repeating it? Why are we hurting ourselves? Why are we killing people? When God, Jesus already died for all that stuff. Amen. Now you said you said something. You've said two things that I need to go back to rest. But let me t- let me tackle this right here. I'm gonna be in trouble with you too. We just gonna be in trouble together because I'm in total agreement with you. Yes, post your pictures. But what have you taught them? Let's go back to what have you taught them? Because some of these sons are grown. What did you teach them? Did you teach them to love? Did you bring them up? Did you make them go to church? Did you bring them up in the admonition and the fear of the Lord? Because the one thing about that, that I know according to the scripture, Peter, the apostle Peter says, who is he that will harm you when you're doing that which is good? If you brought them up in the admonition and the fear of the Lord, they should always be doing that which is good. So who's going to harm them? Who's going to harm them? And that is if they if they are developing, you brought them up in church, so now they're grown. It's time for them to develop their own relationship with Christ. And, uh, and, and even as they are saying that Mr. Floyd, you know, was a Christian, uh, my thing is, like you said, you know, let's celebrate his life in Christ. Because he just got out of here early. That's all he did. He got out of here early. Did he want to go like that? No. <clears throat> but who's to say that this cause was not for the cause of Christ to bring about some some change Amen. in this earth? You know, somebody has to be used in every area and, and from every aspect. Do we want to be used like that? No, no. But but who's to say that he wasn't? You know, we can't say that he was and we can't say that he wasn't. But but still, even in that, we've got to train these young men to Amen. be in Christ. That's where all of us are supposed to be. And, you know, it's almost like people are wanting to be in Christ and then you have this group that I don't have any, and, and, and it's true, mm-hmm. I don't have anything to do with Christ. Right. 
Yeah, I'm just over here. Right. I'm in the world. Right. This world is my not. This world is my home. But let me serve notice to you this morning. This world is not your home. No. You're gonna leave this place, and when you leave, you need to make sure that you open your eyes up in Amen. the presence of the Lord, Amen. and not in hell. Make sure you open your eyes up in the presence of the Lord and not in hell. Because if you don't, you're going to regret it. And that's going to be far worse than anything you have experienced here on this earth. And that has to be the message of the church. Amen. That has to be the message of the church. Is that we teach, we teach, we teach, we train, we pray, we exhort, Amen. we encourage and live it in front of these young men. Amen. And and stop, you know, stop... Uh, trying to make it seem like because it, without them knowing it some of these some of the mothers mothers let me just say to you without you knowing it if you're not training your children in admonition and the fear of the Lord if you're not bringing them up in Christ you're doing more injustice to them than anybody could ever do amen. can I get an amen in the amen. house because yes because you have to figure you you have to understand that this life will end one day absolutely now you have to think about okay if there if there really is a hell and i say to you this morning that it is mm -hmm. then that means that they're going to spend eternity in hell mm -hmm. but now if they were done wrong on earth they only spend just a little time here but what's a little time compared to eternity? Come on and say amen. Amen. I mean, I'm just saying. It's, let's right. just get it right. You're right. Because if they, if they were in the word, they would know that vengeance is, is the Lord's. Thank you. All he wants to do is be still and let, let me avenge it for you. Yes. So we try to take matters into our own hands. That's when we mess stuff up. You know, we should. We don't want this man's life to be in vain. We don't want his death to be in vain. No, we no, we don't. Right. We want to bring about a change. In order to change, we got to change. Amen. We got to turn from our wicked ways, as the word says, and cut and turn our face to God. Thank you, thank you, and that is so true. And and I'm gonna go back. You you kept saying rest. Oh my God, that's powerful. That is a powerful place to be, and that's where I am. That's why I'm so relaxed and chill. <laughs> And cool. <laughs> I am. I'm telling you. I, I'm so relaxed and chilled and cool until it is ridiculous. I'm not worried about this, this scandemic. Hadn't worried about it from day one. Because I have a God that sitteth out and looks low. I have a God that said, listen, let me tell you what he said. I, I got to read this. This is powerful right here. This is powerful. I have to, I don't know this scripture by heart and I'm not going to pretend to know it. But I'm going to read it. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not short mm. that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities, your sins have separated you from God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. Honey, let me tell you something. When I got saved, I got saved. Amen. And I don't practice sinning because when I need for God to hear me, I want him to hear me. Yeah. And when I cry out to him, I believe that he hears me. So this is where I am in my relationship with Christ. This is why I'm so chill. Don't I look chill? I look chill. I'm real chill this morning and, and every morning. I'm not worried. And even when the enemy brings things to me, God told me, he said, Deborah, I've given you the power and the authority to overcome these things. So what I have to do is in my relationship is to learn how to do that and activate it and then I can be even more chill. Amen. Amen. Even more chill. Yes. And that's where we have to be. That's resting. See, because the children of Israel, they did not rest in God. That's why they didn't make it into the promised land. Absolutely. That's the reason they didn't make it into the promised land because they were in disbelief. Mm -hmm. And resting just simply say to us that we believe and we have faith in God. Amen. Am I right? You're right. And that's where you are. That's, th that's what you mentioned. That's where you are. You're resting in God because you have faith. You believe in the almighty God. You believe in his word and you know that his word is what? It's true. And you know, I, and I watch a lot of churches and stuff, but we've got to stop just doing stuff during a pandemic or, 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 or 
cl- a catastrophe or whatever. We need to start doing stuff every day. You know, I, yes, everybody's doing the food. Thank you. Doing, but we've been at <coughs> hunger and homeless people, period. <coughs> Why are we not? Why is this not a constant for us? Why right, 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 right. That's right, right, just right. me wondering that because you know everybody want to. <clears throat> and then when we do stuff, I, I was always taught when you do some stuff, don't let everybody see it. But now we want to post it. Everybody, <laughs> everybody know what you're doing, and you want the glory for it, or, and all this stuff. I do so much, <clears throat> and people can know for my kids, and, I, and they right. know I call everybody my kids. Nobody mm-hmm. has a clue what I do. I don't brag about it. I don't even bring it up to them anymore. But we want that glory. And I think I heard God say, uh, the word says that, you know, if you get your glory on earth, you're not going to get it in heaven. You're not going to get it in heaven. Yeah, but it just seems like that's what a lot of people are doing these days. Right, um, and, and I understand exactly what you're saying. Don't just do something during a particular season, and especially the church. The church is supposed to be active in and out of season. <clears throat> Active all the time. You're always doing something. And, you know, this is not to brag on me, but but here I am putting this out there. And I have to use this example. And I had to share this with several other people. That before um, the big thing that came to Noonan back in 2018, uh, we went to the park and we prayed that Friday night. Well, that wasn't our first time praying in the park. We had already been praying in the park since 2016. So we were doing, and I shared with them, I said, listen, we have been doing preventive prayer. You you get what I'm saying? Preventive prayer. prayer. It's just like you exercise every day. You're not sick, but you're exercising to prevent something from happening. And so when it does happen, as you said earlier in the broadcast, when it does happen, you've already been praying, so you're prepared for anything that could possibly happen, right? right? This is what you said. You know, a lot of the doctors and things, you know, they committed suicide because they had not been a, more than likely had not been in a relationship with God, or they were weak in their faith, mm-hmm. okay? So we did, preve- we, we started out doing preventive prayer. Did I know that anything of that nature or that stature would come to Newton, Georgia? No. Did I know uh, that, you know, we would have protests here? Did I know any of that? No, I didn't. But guess who knew? God. God. He knows all things. And it's amazing that, you know, when you have your uh, prayers in the park uh, and they are awesome. I mean, people just don't know what they're missing. But there's, there's a handful. Right. But at these protests and all Ooh, this stuff. What Lord, you say? They you can't. <laughs> You cannot keep them home. Can't keep them home. You cannot keep them home. And, you know, some of the guys that that work with me, they have said, you know, we've pondered, you know, should we do it early in the morning? Should we do it late in the evening? And and, and I've shared with them. I said, you know what? I'm sticking with early in the morning because of the fact that this is what God gave me. And those that want to come will come. Those that are motivated to come will come. Those that don't want to come, it doesn't matter what time of the day you do it. And, and, and Jesus never, Jesus never had a crowd when he prayed. He had the few disciples when he had to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And what were they doing? They fell asleep on him. So, you know, uh, I told him, I said, we can't, we can't worry about a crowd. We have to do God's bidding, do his, do what he's commanded us to do, and then what? Go home. And, and we'll let everything else rest where it is because God, being God, and, and he's the one that we're praying to, we don't need a crowd just to do it. Now, will we turn a crowd back? No, we won't. We're just sitting and waiting to see how long it's going to take for them to wake up and realize that we've got to come outside of these four walls and start to pray. Amen. And, 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 and you may not be able to attend everyone that we have, but if you, if you are intentional and if you are purposeful, you can attend every prayer rally we had. Mm-hmm. And I will give kudos and a shout out to uh, Sheriff Lynn Woods. Mm-hmm. Because without me even knowing who he was, he was at every prayer rally. I kept saying to myself, who is this man? I never went to introduce myself, but little did I know that my husband knew him. Because, yeah, because he went to school with with my husband. Right, I taught his daughter. Okay. His uh, niece. Okay. And so my husband knew him, and he said, that's uh, that's Lynn Woods. Um, and so he, I think he introduced me to him and I was like, okay, wow. So he was intentional 
in being at every prayer rep. Stood in the back, never said a word, never tried to get the attention of nobody. He just stood there and he prayed with us. Because perhaps even at that time, he didn't know what God was doing in his life. But he expected for, he was expecting that God was doing something. Absolutely. And look at where he is now. Amen. And he can't do that without God. You can't. You can't. You can't. And 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 uh, so God had him on assignment to come and stand in prayer for us because he knew we were praying for this city and this county. Amen. And so my my uh, hat goes off to him for being a part of these uh, rallies and and supporting them before he even became the sheriff worked for the you know for the uh, county uh, sheriff's department but before he even became a sheriff and that was way back in 2016 right. now from my understanding I was told that he was he's been at just about every one of them yeah. I can't really say you know okay sheriff Woods did you attend the very first one I don't know but I was told that he's pretty much been standing in with us for every rally we had for the most part if you come to one you're going to want to come you want to keep coming in anyway. yes so yes it's just I mean, you just, the people that you choose are, are God lays on your heart to even be in the program is anointed. Yes. I mean, we, it doesn't, there's no race. No, we're not looking at that. Looking no, at just, no, 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 no. It's a body of Christ. Yes. Pray, praising and praising and praying for God. And I saw a post on Facebook that says that there is, there is but one race. And it's a Christian. Well, they said it was a Christian race. Okay. And, and I like that. I like that because, um. Uh, God only made one race of people, and he did desire that they would become the Christian race. Amen. Yes, it's one race, human race, and God created all of us. God created us. And you know, the Bible says, in the end, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Amen. And all of what we're doing right now, um, we're going to find out that it was in vain. A lot of what we're doing right now, is gonna, we're going to find out it is, it, it is in vain. But I will say, uh, to add to what we're talking about, talking about our relationship in Christ, with Christ, um, it is so powerful. And it's time for the men and women of God to bond together, come together. And to know that the only way we're going to fight these battles is going to have to be in the spirit. Amen. They cannot be fought in the flesh. How many times have we been taught that? Not against flesh and blood. Yes, we, we, we cannot fight these battles in the flesh. They're not fleshy battles. I like how George Meyer said, let's fight like a Christian. Thank you. Thank you. Can't fight with our hands. But let's fight with the word of God. Let's fight on our knees in prayer. That's the only way to do it. The only way to do it. And the only way to be successful, you know, we can all go out there and, and, and get our sticks and clubs and, uh, I mean, clubs, clubs and, and, uh, and, and, bats, and bats and guns and knives and stuff like that. For the most part, we're going to get cut up, beat up, black eyes. I'm not trying to get like that. I fought, when I, look, I'm too old for that kind of fight. You know what I'm saying? I used to do it. <laughs> we, but yet, listen, we all did. We all did. Black eyes, bruised up, broken bones. No, 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 no. word from God on every situation that you're going through. Every situation. All we have to do is pull it up and activate it. Amen. And that's, and you know, God gave me this. I don't know if you saw this post yet. But God gave me this. I said, wow. We had... Friday night prayer. We had our quarterly prayer, which uh, starts at 9 and it ends at 12. So, and we go, we come to the church, we sacrifice, we pray, you know, we forget about sleep because you know me, I'm usually in the bed by the end. <laughs> Woohoo, yes. I'm in the bed by then. So you, when I tell you it was a sacrifice, it was a sacrifice for me to be there. So anyway, we were praying, so God gave me that and he said, prayer is power readily available for you. Mm. All you have to do is pray. And you know, everybody, a lot of people, I, I hear, I'm hearing people say, ah, you can't keep praying. Uh, yes, you can. The Bible said pray without ceasing. Thank you. They, they really want, want us to get up from praying and start fighting. 
That's really what they want. Well, but prayer is, is prayer, spirit. Yeah, prayer is our, our weapon. That's what the Apostle Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness, and in in high places. And then he goes on to name the piece of armor. And prayer is a piece of armor. And I think they forget that God will forgive you. Yes. If the, the man who killed George Floyd, if he goes to God and repent. Whew, thank you. He's saved. Thank you. And look, we'll right. be up there with them too if right. they're saved. Right. <laughs> what they going to do? Storm heaven and throw them out of heaven? I don't think so. Right. I don't think so. See, this is, uh, Minister Lucky, this is where we need to be. But people don't want to be here. People don't want to grow up. People want to keep living, you know. Childish. Right. They want to do what's in the world. That's more fun. They think. Yes. But I tell you, I have fun in God. What you say. It ain't, it ain't really what you do. It's how you do it. It's how you do it. And you know, that takes me back. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to invite you to the radio ministry because it took me back to when we tried. Listen, oh, let's get here. Let's go here. <laughs> and what did we try to do back in August of last year? Oh, and it was awesome. I mean, I, I know you got frustrated with it, but <laughs> if I can say that. But, I did. But the basketball team, see, if we had more activities like this or more Thank participation. You. Some of the stuff that wouldn't happen. These kids have something to do because, and I tell you, we had a ball. And they needed that. And they those kids worried needed, me. And they 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 really wanted to happen again. Yes, they. They wanted me. to happen again, but we could not get people to participate. And I'm not sure what it is about them participating in in another event. Mm -hmm. You can't start everything. And neither can you be over everything. Mm -mm. But if something else has been started and is good, then you need to try to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And all we asked was get these young men in your church to come and play basketball. And what did we do? We started out with prayer. First of all, we started out trying to minister to them. And then Absolutely. I left it to every church. Minister to your young men. Absolutely. Train them to be disciples mm -hmm. of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay? And then we had the game. And we did not have, and I and I told him, you know, I told him, I said, look, don't come here showing out because I will put you, what, out of the gym. And I and I had already warned him about you before I got there. Thank you. Look, Apostle don't play, so. I told him, and, and the referees, listen, the referees, the referees were like, uh, now, I, 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 listen, I, I, I'm not coming over there to, to have to fight with these children because <laughs> I've refereed for Upwood and I've refereed for some of these church leagues, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I had to fight with these children. And I told them, I said, I guarantee you. I'm going to tell you like my husband said, I guarantee you. You will not have to fight over here. Yeah, I, I said, because them. I will put a threat on them that won't wait. I said, I will put them out of that gym. And she's not playing. And I meant it. Yes, she did. And I told them, you know, I had to give a couple of boys an eye. I gave them the eye. And yeah, I said, uh, don't, don't play. Mm -hmm. And I told my boys, I said, you are to be the example. Absolutely. I don't care what anybody else is saying. I don't care what anybody else is doing. You're going to be the example today. Mm -hmm. And you will not fight. You will not fuss. You will not name call. And I said, if you do, you already know you're going to have to deal with me. And we really did have a good time. And the it referees enjoyed it. It was fun. They I ended up enjoying it. It was, it was, it was after awesome. After I had to beg them and after I had to assure them that they were not going to have to be fighting with the kids. Absolutely. I mean, it was awesome. And, but, but we didn't get the participation. I, I mean, I'm just, my heart was so broken because I begged, I begged, I begged. And you know, I'm going to say this too. I tried to get some of our white churches to participate and they didn't do it. Mm -hmm. But we did have some Caucasian young men that wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And they did play. We had to just put them in the team. teams. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this is, these are the kinds of things. So, you know, going back to what you said, don't just start doing something in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. You know, when things happen, implement. And God gave me that program, and that's the reason why I refused to quit I mean, I could before see the growing, time was up. I can see growing with um, younger kids, girls. I mean, yes, it's just yes. a, it's an outreach. That's what, that was the whole point of it. And in uh, Newman High School, I, I, I give kudos to them, mm -hmm. uh, Chase Puckett and uh, his crew. They did work with me. For that Amen. occasion. Amen. And they gave me the gym. We had air. 
we didn't have to worry sure about that did. or we had heat and uh and they didn't give it to me but you know we went through the process mm -hmm. and they worked with me Amen. They and did. the city of noonan they were working with me too to have practices when needed but um and you know the lord's will and say the same we will review that again when all this let up i hope so because, yeah because mm -hmm. these, this is what these kids well, need listen, absolutely and talking about you know my um you know you know with their post you know this is my black son i want him to live okay get him involved mm -hmm. in doing the right thing i saw on facebook um a video what um this black family was fighting a white lady. Mm -hmm. And there was a little boy, like he had to be about seven to eight. He got his lips clean too. <laughs> that is so awful. It is awful. And you I'm can't like, do that. Right. You can't do that. You can't how do that. How are we training our kids? That's how we're training them. We're training them to fight. And that's not how you train them to fight. Train them to fight in prayer. And as we get ready to bring this to a close, train them in fighting for the Lord. Amen. There, you will you will have a success rate that's going to be much greater than fighting in the flesh. Amen. Much greater. And so this is where we are today in improving our relationship in Christ. We have to do these things and do them the way God has admonished us to do them. Because other than that, it's going to be a waste of our time. And I just, I'm too old to waste time now. I'm telling you. Too old to waste time. That's why I'm going to stay, I'm going to stay with Jesus. If you don't want to hear what Jesus said and what he did, then you may not want to talk to me. Absolutely. I'm staying with Jesus. Don't, don't think I'm going to side with anybody. I do not side with error and wrong. And I can vouch for that. I don't. <laughs> Oh yeah, I mean I don't. If you're wrong, you're wrong. And I'm, and you know, I don't mind letting you know. And I try to let you know in a nice way. And you know, some people say may say that's not true, but I mean, sometimes you have to get right down with them. Right. You know, I, you, I, I, I let me say, <laughs> this student of mine, he kept messing with me, and he was not listening to me. So I had to get on his level. And you know, back in the day they had this this expression that's called one more again. Mm -hmm. And I told my I told one of my friends at school, uh, she's a Caucasian lady, beautiful, beautiful. Oh, she laughed, she <laughs> she laughed and she choked. I told her, I said, I got him in that cafeteria. I put him up against that door and I told him, I said, Look, you have one more again. He looked at me like <laughs> and with his mouth open, like, I can't believe she said that, because normally I'm not talking like that. But I had to get on, his, get level. on his level. Did he did he do anything else mm -hmm. that was it yeah, no more problems with no more problems and sometimes you just have to get you have to go see there. that's love and that's what these yes. kids are missing love is not um just giving them everything they want a new no. mercedes uh to drive around when we have kids driving mercedes to school yes. and all kind of stuff honey no that's not love and that young man i've since seen him since he uh I don't know whether he graduated. I don't know whether he had graduated or he was in high school. But anyway, he, he saw me and called my name across the stove. Aww. And he came to me and he was like, Coach Harris, you remember me? I said, yes, I remember <laughs> you. You're the one more again student. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't forget. And they never forget you either. No, they won't. But they anyway, face, I mean, uh, not Facebook. Radio audience, thank you for listening today. Thank you, Pastor thank Ellison, you bless for you. blessing us to be a part of this. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to Faith Works with Pastor Jimmy Ellison from Noonan City Church. Tune back in here next week for another edition of Faith Works.